Here we go. So over the weekend, you know, I've had this goal of doing a video blog a day in February. What I'm discovering is Monday through Friday, it's pretty straightforward. I can make it happen. Saturday and Sunday it gets not so easy. I just get caught up with family stuff, projects around the house. And I'm also right in the midst of my paramedic refresher. I'm in Wisconsin. Every two years, we need to refresh our paramedic license. And or certification you can do that in a couple of ways I'm choosing to do it by taking a paramedic refresher class through the technical college in my area Saturday we had class all day we're meeting on three Saturdays plus we have a, a whole mess of online work uh, these learning plans and case discussions and quizzes that we need to complete all in all it's been a pretty good experience on Saturday our class uh, all day was uh, pediatric advanced life support so pals and we did a variety of things starting with the uh, basic life support review specific to kids and infants and then a lot of case discussions and uh, mega codes if you will for kids and you know there's three things that stood out for me um, partly because it's been two years or more since I've been in a formal EMS classroom setting is uh, the number of people myself included that in some of our case discussions when something would come up and maybe as a group or the instructor wouldn't have a precise answer we would turn to our phones and start to Google that uh, for example we we're having a discussion about needle decompression of an infant with a tension pneumothorax and what size um, catheter you would use and I was thinking about it in terms of both the gauge and the length of the needle and my initial thought was like well maybe a standard size say 14 gauge uh, IV catheter the needle gauge would be appropriate but the length would be inappropriate given the relatively more compact nature of an infant's chest and um, so a bunch of us we did a couple of different things some of us were uh, using Google on our smartphones to try to find a reference I did find a reference it incidentally a critical care textbook uh, through Google Books mentioned uh, a small butterfly catheter as being the choice I think it said either a 22 or 24 gauge needle so that ends up being quite a bit smaller than I anticipated and then I also uh, reached out to the crowd through Twitter and said was what does anybody know about this and um, although I didn't get a hey Greg this is what we've taught or learned or used what I have gotten in subsequent days is people have followed up and said, hey, what was the outcome of that? What did you find? What, what resources do you have? So uh, the conversations kept going, um, even though it didn't necessarily get resolved. The final thing I want to mention that's been interesting, the paramedic refresher, is I'm real fortunate that because of my job at CenterLearn, I get to travel to a lot of EMS conferences and trade shows and put my hands on a lot of the new equipment that's uh, being described in magazine articles or sessions. And uh, what I'm realizing is that if uh, some of my colleagues in the paramedic course that are doing day-to-day -day work on an EMS service, they're not necessarily having access to get hands-on with some of that new equipment. So uh, it was, it's fun to uh, for a few folks to see sort of the first time that uh, they got to see a uh, nasal atomizer for uh, intranasal administration of medication or uh, looking at the salt airway. So a couple thoughts just from my paramedic refresher that I'm in the midst of. I got to get it all done by March 31st so I can put in that re-registration application with the National Registry. Thanks for connecting with me here on YouTube or Google+. Plus. You can also find me at GFreeze or the blog EverydayEMSTips.com. Thanks.